welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And today I am here to talk about Goliath by Tochi Anyabuchi. This is a 2022 new release, came out at the end of January, and it is a near science fiction story with, with many literary themes. It talks a lot about inequality, gentrification, climate change, and so much more. The heater just kicked on, so if you hear an air noise, that's what's going on because it's really cold right now. And I had to turn my personal space heater off in order to film this because it was very noisy. So please excuse the heater noise. If you are familiar with Anyabuchi's other works, this writing style is very similar to his novella Riot Baby, wherein you have multiple points of view and the timeline is not linear. That was something that I did not know going into it and it took me a little bit of time to get used to. So because of the unique writing structure with the timelines and the multiple points of view, this is a character heavy book. It is not a plot-based book. It has a plot structure, as in it, or it has four distinct parts of the book that is that the author uses seasons in order to delineate the change. And so just as you have seasons in a year, this book takes place roughly over a year for the main storyline. However, again, like I said, it jumps back and forth between timelines some things are in the past, some things are in the present, some things are a little bit in the future. It, it goes all over. So for the first two parts, they're written very much the same. And in the third part, it all of a sudden goes to more of an interview based. It's like a transcript of a verbal interview that alternates with a, another perspective. And it's none of these are the characters that we have met in the first two or we have been following with the first two seasons so it's a huge jump and departure away but that's that portion of the story still ties in the interview portion is giving the background of what got people to go up into space colonies we what was the catalyst for that movement to actually happen and then the point of view we're seeing i i believe it's a little bit past the the main events of the story just because of the writing of it but this story does not actually give you years the closest it talks about is in the 2050s is what the synopsis says but it was unclear to me whether the 2050s is when everyone started going up into space colonies or if that's when people started returning from the space colonies and because it's more open i think you could take it either way i agree with angela over at the Science Literature Alliance, that this book is heavy on themes. And this is not a book that you're going to get all the themes in one go. Originally, when I finished this, I was like, okay, it was interesting. I'm, I don't think I'll reread it. But now that I've been hearing more reviews, and as I've been thinking about this book, because this book is a, this is a story that sits with you over time, I do think I will reread this book. And I know that I will pick up on other things that I did not pick up on the first read through, especially since I know the further elements of the book towards the end. That is going to color how I read things in the beginning. I know it will. And I think that's okay. This book follows characters who were left behind or didn't have the funds in order to go up into the space colonies. One of the characters we follow, follow she talks about the rest of her family did go up in the space colonies, but her father decided not to, so they did not. Whereas other people couldn't afford it or weren't given that opportunity. Even if they were highly educated, that didn't mean that they had the opportunity to go up. And Anibuchi still shows that this world is going to be heavily privileged towards white people and that those of color are not going to have the same privileges and equal access to get out of a dying world and so instead we see that they have changed their cult so instead we see that they have changed 
the culture of the world to be different because they need to survive. At the same time, we still have white people who were left behind who have decided they're, this is Armageddon and they're going to kill everyone that isn't white. I mean, basically, this is a setting that I can see actually happening. I'm not a fan of dystopian fiction, especially because most of the time I'm like, for me, the premise is just like, yeah, no, you're too much of a jump to get there. Like, I know it's not a popular thing to say, but I didn't like the Hunger Games because I was like, you have no basis for getting to the 13 districts. This gives you a plausible reason for how things happen and how things are continuing to go. And it, it is a social commentary of our society now as well. Also, this is a book that on my second reread, I'm probably going to annotate it. I don't typically annotate my books. I'm not against like underlining things that stick out to me, but actually keeping notes. I think this is going to be a book that I will. I think at this point, I think that uh, the, the quotes that stuck out most to me were from the interview. And so the person who's being interviewed is never named. It's just a interview. And something that they said, they said some very poignant things for me. But one that I really liked is, you tell stories to people in your life, and they tell you their stories. You exchange things. And after a lifetime of doing that, you sometimes forget which are yours and which are theirs. That one specifically, I know, really reached out to me because I don't have the best memory. And but you see how over time people's memory of things change. Again, that quote really made me see the events in the last season completely differently because it goes back to what is our perception. Because this book is so new, I really want to keep this review spoiler free. I know I like this book, but uh, over time as I'm thinking about it more and more, I like it more and more. This is definitely a book that I think should be nominated next year for the 2022 nominations. This is one of those books that make you think and really make you confront who you are and what you believe and what you do. And it was really good. So like I said, I want to keep this video spoiler free, but I am willing to talk about spoilers in the comments. So if you have any questions or if you have read this book and have thoughts that you want to talk about, please leave them down below. I ask that you just mark spoiler tag. That way anybody who hasn't read this yet can go ahead and still read it. Thank you and have a wonderful day.